Hi, in this episode of Jesus 101, we're talking about one of the Ten Commandments, which is usually summarized, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The New Testament repeatedly makes it clear that followers of Jesus are not under the law of Moses. If a command of Scripture is binding on followers of Jesus, it's because the command is found in instructions to New Covenant believers, or in some cases, because the instruction is found in an earlier covenant that was binding on all mankind, such as the covenants given to Adam and all his descendants, and Noah and all his descendants. Commands, such as the dietary law, given only to smaller groups, were not broadly binding. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Wait a minute, you ask. Am I telling you that the Ten Commandments aren't binding because they're in the Law of Moses? Not exactly, since nine of the Ten Commandments are repeated and clarified as binding on Jesus followers in the New Testament. Idolatry, murder, adultery, false witness, and so on are still sins according to the New Testament. There is no ambiguity. But the command to rest on the seventh day is not merely absent from New Covenant directives. It is explicitly abrogated in that followers of Jesus have liberty of conscience to either regard every day alike or to regard some days as more sacred than others. The contexts of Romans 14 and Colossians chapter 2 emphasize freedom of conscience both regarding food and regarding special days. We're told, therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. We see that we're not supposed to judge brothers or sisters in the Lord based on our personal convictions or our personal practices relating to food or drink or Sabbaths. Then why even read the Law of Moses? because the New Testament tells us that these things were written down as examples to us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. There is great wisdom and revelation in the Sabbath commandment, as well as some things that are still binding on Jesus' followers. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, But the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yahweh your God. The New Testament has a lot to say about doing all of our work. If a man does not work, nor shall he eat, to make it our ambition to mind our own business, to lead a quiet life and to work with our hands, to earn so we can care for people in need and not to burden others and to work as unto the Lord and not for men. The Law of Moses continues, On the Sabbath you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, or your daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. Keeping in mind that Jesus tells us that the Sabbath was made for man, and that Romans 14 and Colossians 2 both teach us to honor the consciences of others relating to food and special days, including the Sabbath, we need to give our wives, our mature children, our employees, and our brethren full liberty to honor their chosen Sabbath differently from how we honor the Sabbath, or if they choose, not at all, by considering every day alike. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. When Jesus returns, 
Will he find anyone with faith that Yahweh made the earth and everything else in six days? Or have we exchanged the truth of God for human inventions about millions of years and billions of years? We are made in God's image. And in choosing to rest on the seventh day, it's a godly choice because it is what God did in rest and satisfaction of finishing his work in six days. The Sabbath was made for man. If we sense our need for rest, we may rest. But if the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts to serve our fellow man, we may do so following the example of Jesus, who often healed on the Sabbath, and following the example of the Apostle Paul, who often labored toward the salvation of his Jewish brethren on the Sabbath. But don't let anyone twist your arm that the Sabbath requires you to be in a traditional church meeting on Sunday mornings. You have liberty. You can make Sunday your Sabbath if you choose, but others should not force their choice on you. The Bible never speaks the first day of the week as a Sabbath, but only to the liberty of each believer. Groups of believers have complete freedom to assemble on whatever day and in whatever manner they choose. Messianic Jews tend to prefer meeting on the seventh day of the week, the traditional Jewish Sabbath. God bless them. Other Christian groups prefer meeting on Sundays. God bless them. I often prefer midweek meetings. They're less of a show and more real. If some religious windbag is keeping score on Sundays, I'd rather be marked absent in their book while watching online to make sure I don't miss anything. In Hebrews, the Holy Spirit explains that the Sabbath rest is really pointing to something else. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his works just as God rested from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Looking forward to this rest might be our best way to remember the Sabbath. The good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow. From the morning till the night, everybody's singing. Jesus. Yeah, the good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow. From the morning till the night, and everybody's singing to Jesus. Oh, I, I love Jesus.